Welcome to our program, Astronomy for Everyone. A few weeks ago, on the weekend of September 26th, there was an event here in Southeast Michigan. It was the largest public star party held in our area called Astronomy at the Beach, held at Kensington Metro Park. While thousands are able to attend this event every year, many more aren't able to. And with that in mind, we sent our remote camera to this exciting event to capture the sights and sounds that are there. In addition to those, we'll also have interviews with two individuals. One is the chairman of the Great Lakes Association of Astronomy Clubs, Mr. Dave D'Onofrio, and the other is the president of the Seven Ponds Astronomy Club, one of the seven sponsoring clubs that help form the Great Lakes Area Astronomy Clubs. So if uh, you'd like to see what goes on at this event, Stay tuned. This is Kevin Medden for Astronomy for Everyone. Here at the Astronomy at the Beach at Kensington Metro Park. We are standing outside right now of the Detroit Science Center Portable Planetarium, one of the many things that you can see if you had chosen to come down to Astronomy at the Beach. And of course, it will be back next year or so. If you're a budding amateur astronomer and would like to find out more about this great hobby, an excellent opportunity is astronomy at the beach. As we slowly walk through the auditorium here, you can see the fine folks at various vendors are all set up here with their telescopes and various eyepieces, et cetera, et cetera. As the crowd gets bigger, you can tell that the interest in this hobby is picking up. Our friends at the Port Amateur Astronomy Club are here. Fine folks at Meet are here with all their fine equipment, including their latest baby, which is the Light Switch Technology Telescope. We also have the Warren Club here, and Seven Pines. And just what you expect to see here, more scopes. Again, the Detroit Science Center is well represented here at Astronomy at the Beach. If you want to get into the hobby of collecting meteorites, here's another excellent place to find some meteorites to choose from. Excuse me. Another opportunity, or another example, I should say, of a meteorite.
This is John Shore back at Astronomy Beach, and joining me is the chairman of the Great Lakes Association of Astronomy Clubs, Dave D'Onofrio from the Warren Astronomical Society. Dave, can you tell us uh, what got you involved with astronomy at the beach? Well, we had a comet back uh, a couple years ago, 1997, Comet hale bopp and the thought back then was, boy, why don't we use this comet and all the publicity that goes with it to get the public to come on out into an astronomy event and show them something in the sky that they could all grab onto, they can comprehend, they can get into. What better than a comet, right? Absolutely. So we took advantage of that. We contacted a lot of the local clubs that were in the neighborhood, so to speak, and we put together the GLAC. And what really makes this fantastic is the fact that we have all of the local astronomy clubs in southeastern Michigan coming out here to serve the public, to get the public into astronomy, to show them the sky, to show them what we know, and to get the kids just hopefully interested in teaming into this. Very good. Is there a particular part of astronomy at the beach that's your favorite? Yeah, my favorite part actually is looking at the field and looking at all the families, looking at the kids and the moms and dads, going up to the telescopes, and not just taking a look through the eyepiece, which is fantastic, but they're asking you guys, the astronomers, how did you get into astronomy? What does this telescope do? What can we see? You show them a star, and they're enthused with it. They, they think it's the, the, the best thing they've ever seen, even though you and I, we look at this, a, a bright star like Vega, it looks fantastic, but you know, not a great show in the telescope. The kids don't see it that way. They, their imagination shows this incredible object that's really bright, that has some color to it, and then they want to go from there. Show them a galaxy, show them the moon, and they're in seventh heaven, right? Then Absolutely. we're really rolling. All right, thank you very much, David. All right, thanks a lot, John. Thank you. We're now walking toward the beach here, of all things called astronomy at the beach, hence the name. You don't think we astronomers make this stuff up now, do you? Even though the sun's out, you can still see some astronomers setting up and showing off the sun, among other things. Hi, this is John Shore, back at Astronomy at the Beach, and with me is Kevin Kawai. He's a representative from Celestron. Kevin, can you tell us what brought Celestron to participate in astronomy at the beach? Well, earlier this year, our uh, marketing manager, Michelle Meskel, uh, informed me that a gentleman named Greg Osmick had contacted her and wanted uh, Celestron to participate in astronomy at the beach. So after we'd done research and realized that this is a great public outreach event, we decided, hey, this is something really for us to look into and come out here and support. Super. So what's your impression so far of astronomy at the beach? I am at a loss of words. We were only here last night and seeing the amount of families and children and Boy Scouts, the overwhelmingly attendance number was just so incredible. This is such a great public outreach event. And especially with Celestron being the global sponsors of International Year of Astronomy, one of our missions is to be able to educate and bring astronomy to the people because the children, they are our next generation of future scientists and astronomers. Absolutely. Can you tell us about one of the scopes you brought with you, with you for display? Sure. Right here, well, right next to me, we have our very popular CPC 800 uh, Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope, fully computerized, has GPS, uh, retails for about $2,000. It also utilizes the Skyline technology where the user just has to point the telescope at any three bright objects to get aligned. And from there, the 40,000 object database hand control, you just go ahead and select an object, press enter, and it will slew right to it. Very simple. It's a beautiful telescope. Can you tell us about the small one on the table here, your, oh, sure. the new first scope? This is a 76 millimeter, three inch uh, new Dobsonian. And this is actually a uh, product, an official product of the International Year of Astronomy. This is really a simple alt azimuth configuration, very lightweight, very portable. This is a really great starter scope, especially for, for the young people, because it's not intimidating at all. They don't have to worry about polar aligning it. All they have to do is insert their eyepiece a lot, and just to go ahead and select the target, and it's so simple to use. Tell me about the writing that's on the tube. Okay. 
Uh, because it's the International Year of Astronomy, we paid homage to all the important men and women who made a significant contribution to the world of astronomy. So on the telescope itself, you can see the names of Kepler, Copernicus, uh, Newton, Galileo, Huygens, and so many more, Hubble, Yes, Draymond Havili, that's awesome. Yes, it's, it's incredible. It's it, Like I said, it pays homage to all the uh, forefathers and forewomen of, of astronomy. Kevin, thank you very much for your oh, time. You're, you're welcome. It was a pleasure, John. We hope you've enjoyed this first part of our program on astronomy at the beach. Uh, if you have any questions or want to find out more, please visit our website that you can see down there at the bottom of your screen. And right after this short public service announcement, we'll be back with more Astronomy at the Beach. Welcome back. In the first part of our program, you saw some of the sights and sounds from astronomy at the beach. Now, we were able to get so much exciting footage that we couldn't fit it all into just one segment. So, as they say in those late night infomercials, but wait, there's more. We have more exciting footage from astronomy at the beach, including interviews with a representative from Celestron Telescopes, Mr. Kevin Kawai, and also the Editor-in-Chief of Sky and Telescope magazine, Mr. Robert Noye. Enjoy. As we continue our coverage here at Astronomy at the Beach for Astronomy for Everyone, as you can see, the lines keep getting longer, even though darkness still hasn't set in, as everyone is out to view Saul, the happy sun. There's a young man there, just finished his view of the telescope and letting his mom take a peek now. Once you understand it, you don't have to bring the scope out only at night. You can double the amount of fun you have here with this wonderful hobby that we call astronomy. We're at the 13th annual Astronomy at the Beach. This is John Shore, and with me is John Lyons from the Seven Ponds Astronomy Club. John, can you tell us why are you so involved with astronomy at the beach? Well, I guess I, you know I do like the idea of the outreach to you know to the public, and especially to the kids and everything. And plus, you know, being being interested in the hobby for so many years, you know, it it, it just it just seemed like the right thing to do. So I've been doing this for quite a few, you know, I don't know how many years on, on the planning committee, and I, I plan to keep doing it. So, so you're looking to get more kids to become the next generation of amateur astronomers? Well, that would sure be nice. I you know even if we touch you know just just a handful of kids that come through here out of the thousands. You know, I guess we've done our job, you know, so it's, it's, it gives, gives them some opportunity at least to be exposed to this. So that's why I like it. I Thank it. you very much, John. You're welcome. And Doug Bauer, the president of the Ford Amateur Astronomy Club, seems to have a rather large line here as he shows off the sun again in his wonderful telescope. Looks like Doug's brought one of the big ones with him. Sometimes with a hobby such as astronomy, the most difficult thing is to get good information. And an excellent way to get good information is to join an astronomy club. And when astronomy clubs get together, like here at Astronomy at the Beach, you have an excellent opportunity to see equipment and ask all the questions you need to ask. 
I'm here with Bob Noya, the editor-in-chief of Sky and Telescope magazine, the premier astronomy magazine that all of us Astronomy Club members subscribe to and enjoy every month. What brings you to Michigan, Bob? Well, I'm here for the 13th annual Astronomy at the Beach Star Party. Uh, it's, it's the second night. Last night we had, as I understand it, close to 3,000 people. And uh, it's looking like we might have a good night tonight. It didn't look good earlier in the day, but it's starting to clear. And uh, I already see lots of people, and especially young people, showing up. So it's going to be another fun and exciting evening. Yeah, this is a great event that we have every September, especially for bringing uh, young people and their yeah. adult parents yeah. along to introduce them to astronomy. Uh, what can you tell us about Sky and Telescope? What kind of things do you cover in that magazine? Well, we're kind of a general purpose astronomy magazine. We cater mainly to uh, intermediate and advanced amateur astronomers, but we have articles on a wide variety of topics. We have articles about the latest scientific discoveries. We have articles in a sky map telling you what to look for in the sky each night, what planets are visible, phase of the moon, what nebula galaxies to look at. Uh, we have articles about how to build telescopes, how to take uh, astro astronomical photography, um, you name it. We've got articles, uh, pr product reviews. We have articles on a wide range. Uh, we also cover history, too. Those are some of our most popular articles. Great. Where could I find that magazine? Well, we're on a lot of newsstands, especially your larger bookstores like Barnes & Nobles, uh, you know, Borders, et cetera. Your larger bookstores generally carry a sky and telescope. Uh, one way to get a copy or to subscribe is just go to our website, very simple, skyandtelescope, spelled out, one word, dot com. That might be the easiest way to find us. Or just uh, check with a friend who's maybe is into amateur astronomy. Uh, we have a lot of amateur astronomers who subscribe to the magazine, and uh, they, I know they like to pass around copies each month. Or we can also pass around those cards that come in the magazine That's that right. introduce people to it. Exactly. Uh, each, uh, each issue comes with uh, blow-in subscription cards like those you find in many other magazines. I know uh, you can just ask a friend or neighbor who subscribes to Sky and Tell, and they can give you one of these cards as well. Well, thanks a lot, Bob. I'm going to look for that at the newsstands. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you all for inviting me. Thank you. Well, as the sun sets here at Kensington Metro Park, And it's getting more difficult for my camera here to give you the brilliant pictures that we've enjoyed throughout astronomy at the beach. Let's take one more pass and see what the folks are looking at. As you can see, the crowds are getting thicker, obviously, and longer at some of these telescopes because, obviously, it's getting darker and everyone's getting excited to see what can we see today. And most of Saturday, as you all probably know, here has been rather cloudy. However, a nice blue pocket of sky has opened up right over the park here, and many people now have an opportunity to see the stars, the moon, nebula, galaxies, and everybody's favorite, the planet Jupiter and its Galilean moon. This luminosity or, or nebulosity we see around these stars, you're probably not going to see naked eye. You'll see the stars, and that, that's enough. I mean, these, these things just sparkle like jewels in the heavens. Another one is called the owl cluster. You know, we see the owl in here. Two eyes and the wings coming out, and the legs down here. Okay, this has been called an, an owl cluster for a long time, but you know, these were names astronomers put on and, and with their imagination. We can name things any way we want. And there's one of the members of the Ford Astronomy Club. Dennis Sally out looking through his telescope as a, some small youngsters appeared who want to see the moon, of course, as it's not quite dark enough to see any of the objects in the sky just yet. And even man's best friend makes an appearance here at Astronomy on the Beach. So hopefully this brief tour of astronomy at the beach here at Kensington Metro Park has piqued your interest not only in the hobby of astronomy, but coming down here next year and enjoying the fun for yourself. Hopefully, as you continue to watch our show, Astronomy for Everyone, you'll continue to appreciate the brilliant things that are available as you get involved in this hobby.
So I hope this brief snippet of what goes on here at Kensington Metro Park every year, sponsored by the GLAC, all our friends here who uh, put this astronomy on the beach together, hopefully you all get an idea of what a wonderful event this is. And we've piqued your interest enough that you will be here, come down here next year and take it in yourself. So as the skies get darker, and my camera tells me that the light is failing, this is Kevin Medden for Astronomy for Everyone. We hope you enjoyed our program on Astronomy at the Beach. Uh, if you have any questions for us regarding this program or any other program or any subject, please send us an email. You can see our address there at the bottom of the screen. And just so that you know, next year's Astronomy at the Beach event will be taking place on the weekend of September 10th, 2010. After this short message, we'll be right back with What's Up in Tonight's Sky. Hi, this is John Shore. Welcome back to Astronomy for Everyone. We're here at the Dassault Systems Planetarium at the Detroit Science Center, and we're going to talk about what's up in the night sky for November 2009. The month will start out on the 2nd with a full moon. Seven days later on the 9th, we will have the third quarter moon, and then on the 16th, it will be a new moon. Now, the neat thing about this is one day later, Tuesday, the 17th of November, there's going to be a meteor shower. It's named the Leonids. Now, meteor showers are streams of rubble, pieces of small rock, dust, and gas left behind by comets. You can think of comets as the pig pens from the Peanuts cartoons of the solar system. Whenever they get close to the sun, they melt and leave behind a trail of small particles of sand, dirt, and rock. The Earth flies through these rivers of rubble on a regular basis, and when they do, they impact the air of the Earth, sometimes 100 miles or more up in the atmosphere. They squeeze the air in front of each of these particles, which heats the air, which heats the particle, and making it glow, and it looks like a shooting star, what they're commonly called. Sometimes these shooting stars can travel as many as fast as 60,000 miles an hour. And may, it may look very close, but actually it's hundreds of miles above your head. The Leonid meteor shower is called that because of the direction of where the meteors appear to be coming out of, the constellation of Leo the Lion. The source of the material that make up the Leonid meteor shower is the comet Temple Tuttle. So what you'll see on the morning of Tuesday, November 17th, is a faint shower or several shooting stars an hour shooting out of what appears to be the constellation of Leo the Lion. You'll find it in the eastern sky just before dawn. Look for a backwards question mark which marks the head of Leo the Lion. And you'll be looking not just at that one location but the entire eastern by northeastern sky to find some of these shooting stars or meteors. Jupiter will also be up in the night sky, but it's going to be located in the southwestern sky, still in the constellation of Capricornus, the sea goat. If you get up early in the morning and look to the eastern sky, you'll be able to see the planets Saturn, Venus, and Mercury low to the ground just before dawn. 
Anytime after 3 a.m., you'll also be looking high in the sky near the constellation of Gemini the Twins, where you can see the red planet Mars. Well, that's what's up for November 2009. Thanks for tuning in to Astronomy for Everyone. I'm John Schroer. Thanks for watching.